Uh, all right, it looks like uh, pretty much everyone is here, so I guess I'll get going. Um, I'm, as previously stated, I'm Dwyer. Um, I've worked for WordPress for over five years. I'm going to give a brief, sort of like general overview of Gutenberg, the new WordPress editor, what it means. I'm not going to be having like any React code or any code whatsoever. Uh, Shannon Smith is giving a talk uh, in the next round about uh, React and Gutenberg. If you're interested in that, so definitely go check out that talk if you want to learn how to actually like build things at Gutenberg. I'm going to be giving sort of like an overview, like what Gutenberg is, why it's being brought in, what its impl implications are for users, uh, what its implications are for developers, some of the criticisms that have been leveled against Gutenberg, uh, which have been um, uh, a few, uh, and then sort of the general roadmap for the future. So of course, the question is of course, what is Gutenberg? And the short answer is that's the new content editor for WordPress. Uh, it's going to replace that sort of standard WYSIWYG editor where you've pretty much like typed everything you've ever previously typed in WordPress, where you've thrown all your embeds and like short codes, uh, where uh, page builders usually throw their sort of whatever they, it is they do. Uh, and that's obviously a big change, but Gutenberg is more than that because it's going to sort of revolutionize how WordPress content and development is done in the future and turn into a much more modular approach and it completely revolutionize how we do WordPress. That sort of paradigm change that M Morton was talking about where it's basically like there was the WordPress before Gutenberg and there's gonna be the WordPress after Gutenberg and those are gonna be quite different things and it's very exciting and they're like a huge change. Uh, but of course, let's go into more details. If you've updated to WordPress 4.9.8, uh, you'll have probably gotten this prompt here to uh, try, try out Gutenberg or install the classic editor. Gutenberg is, a core, is at the moment a plugin, but it's gonna get moved into WordPress core and WordPress 5. But at the moment you can install it as a plugin and test it out and so forth. And the reason this prompt is being brought up is because you know some plugins and themes don't work with the new editor because it's a big change. So if you haven't had a chance to test out Gutenberg with your site and make sure it's compatible with the theme, definitely click the install the classical editor plugin because that will keep your WordPress site working uh, and functioning in the future and just basically keep things as they used to be before Gutenberg. If you actually install that plugin, it will create for you a Gutenberg post. Uh, hopefully some of you have had a chance to see sort of this post changes with sort of every iteration of Gutenberg, Gutenberg, so this is one of the later ones. And you notice there's a big change for the WordPress dashboard in the back end of the post uh, for what things look like. A lot of the fields were used to have disappeared. Uh, there's the permalink, the title field has sort of disappeared. Um, you'll notice that the sidebar has changed. There's stuff you're sort of familiar with, um, like categories, but there's also sort of this distinction between document and block. And the other big thing to, to, to notice on is when we're looking at this, what you're seeing in the back end of WordPress looks like a blog post. When we're looking at it, it already looks like something we'd expect to see in the front end of the site. And that's crucial for Gutenberg because Gutenberg is about moving WordPress to a true WYSIWYG experience instead of this thing we call WYSIWYG uh, at, at the moment which uh, is, you know, not really WYSIWYG at all, but just sort of like there's text and stuff and you can bold things. But of course, the question you're probably asking is like, why are we doing this? Why are we pushing through this big change? Some of you may have heard, you know, that there's kind of like rumblings in the WordPress community. People are kind of worried about like rollout and accessibility issues and implications this has for like all the various ways people use WordPress because people customize it and change it and do, uh, do so. And changing something like the content editor is a big one because so much in WordPress revolves around the content editor and how it works. So changing that means all these themes and plugins have to update. Uh, and there's various problems that we can run to and the sort of complexity of changing it. So we have to have a good reason for doing that. And so this is sort of like twofold. One is that sort of site builder is now really good. If you've like listened to like a podcast at all, like in the last few years, you've probably heard advertisements for Squarespace or Wix. I built it beautiful, I think. I can probably like recite the ads from memory at this point. But the thing, and Medium is of course sort of like a direct competitor to WordPress and sort of like the blogging uh, short, like short story area. And the thing is like these have gotten very good 
at allowing users to create beautiful content right off the bat. You can go in and start typing and start creating and you create something that looks beautiful and it looks beautiful as you're creating it. And it's very easy for new users to come in and be like, oh, I want to add like an image here or I wanted this text to look this way. And it's simple and straightforward to them to go and start changing things. And these pe the people behind these have put in a lot of effort to create them. And they've changed the standard for what users expect on the web. Users expect something more like a true WYSIWYG experience. And if WordPress doesn't offer that, sure, we're like 30% of the web now, but we won't be 30% of the web in the future. And going back to what Morton was talking about, WordPress is all about trying to get everyone being able to publish. Everyone have control over their data. And if we don't keep that open source option competitive, what's out there in the closed markets, then less people start using WordPress and WordPress won't be able to complete Peach. And I mean, it sounds like when we have like 30% we're like, what do we have to worry about? But the internet has gotten much more closed garden as, as things have gone on. People are switching away far more to things like social media and so forth, where people's content is controlled by large companies and so forth. And that if they disappear off the map, then they take your content with you. And it's vital that WordPress remains out there, remains competitive, which means we have to look at these guys and see what they're doing. Uh, well, people, let's be inclusive. Um, and, and, keep, and basically keep competitive. And going to sort of like true WYSIWYG, and it, I, this is a lot more useful slide when I was in the other room and had the Divi talk before me. Uh, but Divi has this like wonderful ad uh, to sort of like describe the current WordPress uh, back-end editing experience because they're based, the ad is a woman sort of like trained to create a WordPress site and then she's like, how do I create this masterpiece? And uh, she sort of looks at the back and is sort of like, this is the old editor where he's sort of like text and buttons are sort of like, how does that translate into the front end? How does what I'm changing here reflect what's on the front end? And it's like a giant jump because what we're seeing here doesn't reflect what's showing up on the other end. And you can jump back and forth, but we know that these editing experiences where what a true WYSIWYG, something more like a true WYSIWYG is possible, which is why users are using things like Divi or switching to, or trying to use Medium or Squarespace or Wix. And WordPress has to step up its game. So, how is Gutenberg doing this? The big thing is everything is now a block in Gutenberg. Gutenberg is taking WordPress content and making it modular. So think of everything you could possibly put into that old page editor. Uh, headers, paragraphs, short codes, embed codes, uh, embeds, uh, using meta fields like custom fields and so forth. In Gutenberg, everything becomes a block, the sort of essentially a Lego building piece which you build content with. And the advantages of this is then when you have your Lego pieces, you can start building lots of cool stuff because the Lego pieces click together very nicely and they have set rules and they're standardized. And so you can do all the cool stuff in the same way the power of Lego is because everything is modular and all those blocks click together nicely and work together. And we've taken this sort of like complex sort of like tapestry of stuff well, you know, giant pile of tools that previously we used to create content and now we're creating one modular thing, the block, which then we use to create content with in the Gutenberg editor. And I'm stealing a little bit from uh, Morton's talk on Gutenberg and the WordPress of tomorrow because this goes far more than that. Going back to uh, what I was saying about Gutenberg being more than a page editor, the idea is that it's going to expand for beyond that. So at the moment, it's going to live in your sort of main content editor. So you'll have like your post title blocks, post meta, your paragraphs, your block quotes, and they'll live there and they'll click together nicely. You can create night, we'll be able to create nice layouts in the future and all your content will work magically. But it's going to move beyond that because Gutenberg is going to take over the whole view. It's going to take over the customization because we're not just going to have paragraph blocks or header blocks. We're going to have like, uh, I'm sorry, heading blocks. We'll have a header and footer blocks and sidebar blocks and main blocks and layout blocks we can drag other blocks into. And so the whole uh, development and content creation of WordPress as a whole will become modular. You will like add your he header block and like drag a menu block into it. And then because of this modular approach, uh, it'll be easier for plugins and themes to work well with each other because everything is built on this fundamental structure and everything is these set rules for how those blocks click together. 
So we can even do things like shift content between types of blocks and switch what type of block something is because we have those set rules. And that gives us immense power for creating content, for creating beautiful content, and for creating sort of this modular approach. Because the sort of general idea of Gutenberg is the block unifies all these types of content and makes it extendable because it's in WordPress. So then with, block, block, with themes and plugins, we can add new types of blocks. So in the same way Lego, I can have my basic Lego block set, but let's say I want to, I don't know, build a Death Star with Lego. So then I can go out, get a theme or plugin that creates my Death Star, uh, Death Star blocks, and I can add my, add my TIE Fighter blocks or my giant laser thing, and then I've created a Death Star with Lego, and that's pretty cool, and the same concept will extend for WordPress. And then on top of that, in addition to extendability, as I was saying before, the interoperability, which is because everything is built with Lego blocks, they're all going to click together nicely. At least, that's the hope and dream. So, I mean, this is a lot of theory, uh, but really, I mean, everyone wants to see how this works. And I'm going to do sort of a quick poll beforehand. Who has played with Gutenberg already? All right, that's pretty good. Uh, who has never touched it? Oh, I love you guys. <laughs> that, that was what I was kind of hoping for. Because <laughs> otherwise, it'd be like, yeah. Anyway, excellent. I'm going to try a demo. Hopefully, nothing will blow up. Because uh, otherwise, it's like a lot of my talk gone. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm probably going to try switching to this other microphone. Uh, yep, while I'm actually typing things, we'll see how that works. So I've created a post uh, in the back end. I don't know if that actually works. OK. This, I've got Gutenberg installed in my uh, local install of WordPress. And you notice there's sort of like a big change already. So a lot of the traditional things you're used to seeing have disappeared. And there's pretty much the prompt at the beginning is add a title and write your story. So obviously a big change. But so of course, the thing is like, how do I create it? So immediately there's a well, Gutenberg does a lot for most of the blocks is add prompts. So I immediately know I should add a title here. And I can call it something like sample post. Uh, and then if I hit enter, it jumps into the content area. Now the basic building block, uh, the basic block in Gutenberg is the paragraph block. When you jump uh, into the content editor, you're automatically in the content block, uh, paragraph block, and you can switch uh, to other blocks from that type. So Let's quickly add a paragraph block. I'm going to just steal some lorem gibsum because I'm very nerdy. And then I have my paragraph block jump up right away. And immediately you can see you have some setting controls here for your block. I can change the text alignment. I can left to right alignment. I can do usual things I want for text, bold it, italicize it, link it, et cetera. But then I also have these little settings for the block and the right hand sidebar. Uh, of uh, the editor, so I can make the text smaller or larger. I can add a drop cap if I want. Uh, I can change the color settings and so forth. And each block is the additional settings, some which appear through the sort of like clicking in to a block and the settings appear, and some that will be in the, in the sidebar for control there. New. And then I can create another one quickly if I want to do, do that. And then, but let's say I want to add something other than that. So we'll see that you have this plus, uh, this plus icon up here, and that basically gives a list of all the blocks that are available for Gut Gutenberg at the moment. So you have your most used, there'll be an initial prompt, but we can see we have inline elements, uh, layout elements like columns, buttons, uh, widgets, so I could add a latest posts, and the posts appear there. And here we see the unifying effect of, of Gutenberg was previously like widgets and widget areas we drag on, now it's a block in WordPress. And continues to work the way we expect, continues to have the same uh, controls, but it's unified, everything is one place, and it, we don't have to like jump back and forth and learn all these different types of things. There's one thing, and it's the block. And then if I click down here, we'll see, also see the prompt down here. So you have two places to add new blocks in Gutenberg. 
there's some criticism is sort of like the disappearing of the plus arrows and that there's a lot of clicking. But I think when you start really using Gutenberg, you're going to start using the keyboard a lot more and basically use the forward slash button. Because if I hit that, then it gives me a prompt for new voxed ads. So I can just start typing and then it jumps immediately to a heading block. And then I have a heading. And I control like the type size of the heading over here as I would for the other types. And I can go to a new line. And then let's say I want to add a list. Okay, now I have a list. List item one. Not gonna worry about spelling. Are you using the release candidate or the uh... This is the latest version of Gutenberg that's uh, on the page. I do have a different theme installed that changes some of like the, the things, which is why it might not look exactly the way you're expecting. I'll uh, switch back and forth. But again, this is also part of that WYSIWYG thing, which is a good point where we can create styles to make sure that the text at the back of Gut in the Gutenberg end of things matches what's on the front end. Uh, so that's a great point. Basically, you change your theme, the styling in Gutenberg is also going to change. And then I can add more cool stuff, like I can quickly add a gallery and select stuff from a media library. Just grab a bunch of... Create the gallery, I can insert captions I have a want, and it jumps there. And then I can use things like the column setting in the sidebar to change it to like four by four or whatever. And again, immediately I'm adding content, I'm creating some sort of layout, and the other cool thing that Gutenberg can do, this is kind of in beta, but columns, so I can add column content and have control over that. And again, sort of control that number over here on the side. So we're seeing that Gutenberg is giving us a lot more control in the basic editor of WordPress the, than we had with the old one. And it's creating these what, WYSIWYG experience sort of right off the bat. But then we can start going a little bit further because Gutenberg already, because of these blocks, we can start adding rules and stuff so we can expand what the editor does. So one of the cool bits that Gutenberg allows you to do is reusable content. So if you create a block, you can make it reusable. Just mark it so, and then WordPress stores it. So I've already created this block here, just a paragraph block that I've already created some settings on, and I can just pop it onto the page because I've already created it. And if I edit this block here, it will change the content everywhere in WordPress. So I could use this block for creating something like a call to action that's gonna be constant on page and I add it wherever I want or like a constant phone number or whatever and then I'm able to control all the reusable content elsewhere in the back end. Again, showing the power that Gutenberg can for sort of creating these experiences and giving control of our content and how it moves and how it behaves. Uh, what am I forgetting? But then, that's the base of Gutenberg. That's sort of like general block content. So we can quickly add things to or, or post and create a nice WYSIWYG, or what you see is what you get, so we see our front end post looks like we expect. It's looking what's in the back end. But let's, let's take this a step further, because the advantage Gutenberg has on things like page builders or site builders, it's, it's that it's extendable. So I can go out and get a plugin or a theme that adds stuff to the Gutenberg editor, and it's going to just work with the stuff that's already there. So I'm going to go in my back end. I've already installed the Atomic Blocks plugin, and so I can activate that. Do, 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 do. A little bit slow. It's going to get there in the end. It definitely worked last time. I tested it. Okay, we're going through. Slowly but surely. Are we using blocks? Are they um, pages that are post in the database? Uh, I don't know what it's, how it's, I think, I'm not sure how it's pulled in. Uh, yeah, you, there's a place where you can edit them in the dashboard. I, I assume it's pulled somewhere in the, the database because I don't otherwise know how it'd be handled. Yeah, so I think it's sort of like, yeah, and then it's sort of like using React to, yeah, I don't know how the magic works. So okay, that's installed or activated now, so if I refresh my post, 
also being slow. Oh, that's not, not so bad. And then if I go to the add cards and scroll down, I will see now there's an atomic blocks list of cards uh, in my dropdown. So I can go and choose a profile box. And we can see here that it's obvious when I drop this on what content I need to add for the profile box and where it needs to be entered. So if I'm a new user to WordPress, or even if I'm just like someone is being told to add content to this WordPress site that's already been created, and someone's like, go add a profile box, you can search for a profile box, add it, immediately know what you have to add and where it's, it needs to be added, and making the content entry a lot easier, making onboarding easier, making learning WordPress easier, because it's just obvious where everything needs to go. So I can add my name, I can add my title, I can add a description. I can choose an image, gonna go with a moon of Saturn. Update. And then when I look it on the front end, again, I have my card. So that's showing the power of the extendability of Gutenberg and also the WYSIWYG sort of usability. So, okay, I have a card, I can add a card, I can make it work with Gutenberg, and it's interoperable. So now we're seeing how we can start adding all that cool stuff. We can create our own Death Stars of Lego in WordPress and essentially create that WordPress of tomorrow, the WordPress of the future uh, that Morton sort of like has referred to in previous talks. But we can go a step further because it starts to give us control. So if like if you're a developer and you're like, okay, Gutenberg's great, but I need to sort of like control the content that gets added on certain pages, and if I want like a uh, custom post type, and let's say it's the type of book because I'm pulling a book, I wanna make sure that whoever's adding content only adds the type of content that I want. So I can restrict things to the block already, that's obvious, but how do I restrict to the page editor like in general? Because I don't want people to start like adding random YouTube stuff to like the end of like book things if that's not part of what the design calls for, if I need to pull into a feed somewhere else. I need to sort of like set the rules for the content that I'm entering. But, and Gutenberg allows us because we have control over like templates. So I can go to the themes and for one of the themes I have installed here, that will hopefully work. I can activate. I have created a custom post type called books. So if I, and I've set the type of blocks that are automatically added to the books custom pipe right off the bat. So I've said in my functions file, just through standard PHP, I need to be like, okay, it needs a title, it needs an image, it needs an author field, and it needs a description. And so I can quickly add these. It's obvious what needs to be added for this books template right away. And most importantly, for sort of like keeping content clean, keeping everything organized, I'm able to shut off adding extra cards because you see there's no plus icon here, there's no plus icon down here if I try to hit enter. I'm able to control it and set restrictions for how these blocks are added in the template. Now for the moment, this is only uh, added to custom post types. For phase two of Gutenberg, it'll be added to page templates. Uh, to, it's not quite there yet. Uh, but again, we're seeing the sort of rules we can add and the ability, way we're able to extend and make modular, modular content in Gutenberg that plays nice between different themes and plugins. So this is the power of Gutenberg and this is like the crazy stuff I'm gonna do. And that's pretty much it for the demo. I'm gonna go back to the boring slides, uh, which at least won't break. There is a way to see the HTML. Um, there is a code editor, so that sort of shows the, what's going on in the content editor behind everything. Uh, what Gutenberg basically does is add these uh, comment tags that basically says the name of the card and then React goes in and sort of is like, does all the crazy stuff that makes it interactable and so forth. I, you can go in and change things if you want, if you need to debug things. Honestly, I would try to stay away from the code view as much as possible because then it's more likely to break things and it's better to keep everything sort of modular and moving through React and your theme and plugins file than going in and trying to change things here. Basically, once you start using Gutenberg for posts, stay away from the code editing. Uh, if you, know, you like the control of HTML and so forth, uh, which I assume a lot of people do, that is where that goes into the theme and plugin files. So. But for the moment, you still have the option to go and look. Sure. Uh, for if you're developing your own theme, are there a list 
of templates or themes or options to help you like theme all the possible options your users are going to do for a certain block? Like, if I create my theme and I have like an unthemed left specify on some block I don't know about, is the kind of scenario I'm worried about? Uh, you're able to, it's going to sort of depend. So you can probably, I don't know enough about React to sort of like comment on sort of like the sort of close sort of controls that you have within uh, the set blocks. You can override certain things obviously with like CSS and so forth. Uh, and I think there'll probably be ways to turn on and off certain functionalities for sort of core blocks, but. Most of it's going to be sort of like standard content. So like it's Gutenberg is going to spit out paragraphs, headers, lists. So <coughs> if it's only if you sort of create additional stuff that you need, sort of like you'll still need to, for most Gutenberg things, you just need to style the basic th HTML output that you would for any other, uh, other theme. So you have to make sure your paragraphs are styled the way you want them, headings and so forth. And otherwise, things will keep adding, and it's only if you want to like add extra controls, like I want to pull in a custom a plugin that adds additional blocks or something, that you probably need to start worrying about CSS and like styling and making sure those work things. So the basic stuff should work with most themes most of the time. And now, if I can steal. Uh, so the, obviously the next question is, what does this mean for users? And the big thing, of course, is should I use Gutenberg? Uh, should I install the classical editor plugin instead? Uh, and keep going with that. And the answer is, of course, it depends. Uh, for most themes, as I said, Gutenberg is going to change how the back end experience, editing experience work, works. So like the forward front end won't, won't change, so you should be good to you just like allow WordPress to update to 5.0, Gutenberg comes in and you just start editing with Gutenberg editor instead. You should, you know, test your theme, your website beforehand, preferably on a staging site if you can. There might, there's probably going to be cases where you can't use Gutenberg because you've heavily customized uh, your WordPress development site for whatever reason, uh, just for whatever workflow or content editing or purposes you need it for. Or if your site is complex and uses like a lot of plugins and some of them are updated to work with Gutenberg or some of them are not, you'll probably want to install that classical editor plugin uh, as well. Be, uh, just keep things running as it is. Uh, I've sort of like put in the slides like, for the moment, use the classical uh, editor plugin. Uh, and it's gonna be like supported for a long time to come. So it's not like there's a huge rush uh, that you absolutely have to make sure your site is working with Gutenberg right away as long as you have this one of the, as long as you have this plugin uh, installed, then things will keep as they are. I do encourage you to work on switching towards Gutenberg simply because that's the direction WordPress development is going to go in the future. Most of the major plugins and themes are going to update to so they're Gutenberg compatible. And then we're like stage two and three of Gutenberg, that's going to change how like theme customization works. And pretty much most of the updates of WordPress are going to be built around Gutenberg and, uh, and, and sorry, ensure, uh, with the assumption that Gutenberg is going to be installed. So you do want to update with to Gutenberg in the future if you can, simply because that will allow you uh, to take you know, advantage of the future updates to WordPress in the process. But if like you don't have time, you don't have budget, uh, your site is complex and you don't want to change it for the moment, you should be okay for at least a year or two. Uh, in terms of implications, uh, Morton already talked about this already. Accessibility for Gutenberg is, well, just it's just bad. Uh, I mean, the standard is that we meet the WCAG 2.0 guidelines for putting it out. So w WordPress will probably do this for 5.0, I assume so, because that's the standard they've set up for themselves. But that doesn't mean that Gutenberg is going to be fun or easy to use for someone who's using a keyboard or a screen reader. And the feedback essentially from the community from testing is that Gutenberg makes experiences for people with accessibility issues worse. It's just straight up worse than the standard editor. 
The accessibility team at WordPress has been working very, very hard to make Gutenberg accessible, but there's been sort of problems in the development rollout because the accessibility team doesn't have a React developer and the React developers working on Gutenberg aren't always thinking about the accessibility, so things get fixed and then they get broken again and so on and so forth. So it's been a bit of a nightmare and for people sort of like following general fallout, the WordPress accessibility lead actually resigned this week, so that's, again, not a good sign. My guess is that Gutenberg will come to 5.0, passing WCAG standards, but if you're using a screen reader or you need to use a keyboard, the experience is gonna be worse for you. Uh, that's terrible, and that shouldn't be what's happening, but it sounds like the way it's gonna be, and hopefully that's gonna be fixed in the future, so wherever you can, stand up and scream and yell at people online in a nice way, uh, because yeah, Word, WordPress is about allowing everyone to publish and get on the web, so, and that means everybody, you know, not, not just, you know, people like me. The other big thing is, of course, page builders. If you're using something like Divi or Beaver Builder, sort of what is the implication for that? And the good thing is like, for most of those page builders, they have like the big development team, they've already updated their plugins or themes so they're Gutenberg compatible straight off the bat, so you don't really have to worry. Uh, obviously, the sort of like roadmap for anyone starting a new page builder at this moment would be to just extend Gutenberg because that's the direction WordPress is gonna go. If you're creating a page builder, you can make one that's modular or extendable, it works well with other themes and plugins. But for a lot of the like current players out there, they're sort of taking a wait and see attitude because obviously they've put a lot of effort into creating their current page builder experience and they don't know if they're gonna like switch over. It may make sense to them for change later. My assumption is like some Players like Beaver Builder will just keep like chugging along and people will use that if they like it for a very long time to come. And then we're probably gonna see new players pop up who are gonna try and take adva advantage of the creative power of Gutenberg. What does this mean for developers? Uh, the big thing is of course the WordPress stack changes. If you work with Gutenberg, we have a lot more tools get got pulled in. So we have React as the big one because that's what's basically making Gutenberg work. We're gonna have things like NPM and Node running those things in the back, and probably also something like Webpack 2 as well, I'm sorry, Webpack as well. Uh, so WordPress development got a lot more complex for if you're doing anything in sort of like uh, plugin development or theme development and touching Gutenberg, so a little bit more work off the bat, which is sort of like, kind of goes with sort of like the way I think front-end develop, web development is going in general, things getting more complex, especially in the front-end of things, uh, but also means that you know, it's a little harder to get running past a certain point in WordPress, which is, you know, is what it is. The other big sort of concern is meta boxes or meta fields, essentially all those fields and boxes that plugins and themes add to the, like, the bottom or side of your page so you can add extra stuff to your WordPress page. So like Yoast for adding things like uh, meta titles and meta descriptions or WooCommerce or advanced custom fields so you can enter in your own content fields. And most of the developers will have to update their plugins or themes in order to mate with Gutenberg. Most of them, many of them already have. And they've sort of like moved to sort of two places. So this screen cap is sort of like where Yoast has done its solution. So the big one is obviously tucking those meta fields, meta boxes at the bottom. Uh, so, so you might have to scroll a little bit to get there. And the other sort of option is putting it on the side. So you'll notice here that the Yoast button is pressed instead of uh, the gear icon. And then that gives you your Yoast meta fields in the sidebar where you can easily reach them and like edit and change things. Uh, one really cool thing that isn't out yet, but I think uh, very cool for a lot of people who are used to, used to using advanced custom fields for developing with WordPress, because honestly, it's kind of hard to develop without it or the equivalent, uh, is that the LA Condon is sort of it's not quite out yet, but sort of created a system for making that more compatible with Gutenberg, because obviously having all your fields at the bottom is not sort of helpful if you're trying to edit with a Gutenberg editor and everything else is in blocks in the front. So the idea for this, and this is sort of like taken from the sort of advanced custom fields blog, is that you'll be able to create your custom, custom fields and target them to a block. Uh, sort of like shown here. So here we have block is equal to testimonial. You create the block through your functions file or in your plugin. Or in your plugin. 
and register it using old-fashioned PHP, uh, so you don't have to go and learn any new React. And then through the magic of advanced custom fields, that block appears in uh, Gutenberg, and the fields appear there, and you have control, which means once this actually gets rolled out, again, not quite there yet, you can start use, creating new blocks in Gutenberg without having to learn any React. And you can just like take your previous knowledge, advanced custom fields and PHP, and just roll right on in and start creating new and cool stuff. So that's very, very cool, and hopefully we'll get to test and use that in the future. I'm very excited. And this brings, of course, to the less exciting stuff, uh, criticisms. If any of you have looked <laughs> at the star reviews of the Gutenberg plugin, you'll notice that they are not good. This is a little while ago. I think the one stars have gone up. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, so basically, there's sort of two main reactions to Gutenberg. Uh, people like me who are like, this is wonderful and full of unicorns and rainbows. And people who like look at it and like, Oh, hell no. Uh, some of it is, you know, people are used to the previous editor and how it works and the systems they have in place. And so it's sort of like, Gutenberg is a giant change. It's kind of scary. We don't know if it'll work out yet. There's risk. And so obviously there's some reluctance there. But there's a lot of also really legitimate criticisms of Gutenberg, uh, the accessibility being the top one. Uh, so general ones have been sort of like, as it's been rolling out, it's been full of bugs. That sort of like goes hand in hand with the complexity. There's a lot of clicking around to sort of get the, uh, to sort of get all the features you want working. I think some of that can be sort of addressed with some of the keyboard shortcuts, like the forward slash one I was showing you earlier. Uh, compatibility with current themes and plugins. Uh, all the developers and theme, theme developers and plugin developers have to ensure that or their products work with Gutenberg if they want to have a future in the WordPress market, which is basically forcing, forcing giant changes in a lot of people. Accessibility, and also the sort of concept what I want to call Gutenberg high water, which is essentially that Gutenberg is coming, and no matter the reaction of the community, it's going to happen. And a lot of people are understandably angry about this because the feeling has traditionally been that WordPress is a community, that people in the community give back, and that the WordPress core development team will listen to that community and sort of respond to what it needs and it's sort of like it's a reaction to things. And with Gutenberg, it's sort of like the community doesn't like it and it's going ahead. Uh, I'm a big supporter of Gutenberg. I think it's a great concept. I think definitely the way it's being rolled out very quickly and sort of the sort of background politics and community has not been good. I think WordPress needs to do a better job of that in the future and sort of like really listen to what the community is saying. Uh, hopefully this sort of dynamic will change because there's stuff like the classic WordPress for fork or classic press where uh, Scott Bowler has basically gone out and created a fork of the WordPress code. So if you really, really don't like Gutenberg, uh, this or some other equivalent will probably create a separate version of, Guten of WordPress that will continue using the classic editor in the future and create essentially a separate community. Um, I'm kind of hoping that won't happen because I like this concept of like this giant unified community that's like 30% of the internet that can, you know, make pub publishing available for everyone and sort of everything works out and like we can be this huge positive influence and if it's sort of like the community starts like breaking up, that's not great. Uh, but we'll sort of have to wait and see because uh, there's, yeah, a lot of sort of politics and sort of like online fighting about this and, you know, a lot of people have very strong reactions. So, yeah. That's the bad stuff. Uh, going back to sort of more positive things with the roadmap. Well, okay, that might be positive, might not be. Uh, the, you can go check out gutenstats.blog, which collects uh, statistics on installs of Gutenberg. So if you're using WordPress.com or Jetpack and allow them to collect statistics on you, uh, not really my thing, but like whatever, it's useful for this sort of thing. It's sort of re registering the number of active installs in Gutenberg, the number of posts written, and the number of posts written yesterday. So this screen cap is a little low. The actual number of posts written is like 
350,000 now. But this 250,000 number is sort of important because that was sort of like the benchmark in which they were like, once this number of posts have been written, enough people have sort of like tried out Gutenberg, sort of like tested it out, played with it a little bit, given some feedback that we can actually put it into core. And as you've seen, that goal post has been passed, which means the tentative date has been set for WordPress 5.0 of November 19th, 2018, when Gutenberg will be merged into core. So that's coming up really soon. Uh, so if you haven't had a chance to check out Gutenberg or play with it, I would strongly encourage you to do so. Because it's coming, again, sort of hell or high water, uh, whether you like it or not. Uh, if you want to sort of contribute, give back, throw your feedback for how Gutenberg uh, works, how it doesn't work, uh, problems you see with it, obviously you can comment on the plugin review. Another great place is the Gutenberg uh, GitHub uh, page where you can throw in tickets if you want any other problems. Again, strongly encourage you to give back, uh, throw rocks in a positive manner if, uh, as you see fit. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, Gutenberg is a giant jump leap for WordPress. It's very audacious. It's going to allow us to create the WordPress of the future. It's a giant change. It's very exciting, slightly scary, and I hope you will all go out and play with it and hopefully create new and cool and interesting stuff like, you know, Lego Death Stars. And that's it. Questions? Uh, for one of our member, um, don't quote me on this, uh, Gutenberg will sort of like inject sort of like default styles for a lot of this stuff. So like your gallery will work in sort of like the general layout and so forth and your theme might modify that on top of if you target those classes and so forth. So everything should look pretty decent by default. Your theme may tweak things if like there's some overlap. So it's more like, it kind of depends I guess. There isn't like a set thing, it's more like, do you want to change this? Your theme can change it. Otherwise, there's some defaults in place. Uh, so in the demo, you kind of work with the blocks in like the content area. Um, at this point, uh, with Gutenberg, are we able to play with like the header blocks and the realms or something? Uh, no, that's going to be like phase three. Phase two will be page templates, I think. Uh, that would be the next step. And then moving on to customizer beyond that. I haven't done a lot of like recent talking to clients to sort of like really comment on that. I've sort of like heard sort of mixed things from developers who have been t working with their clients in terms of like their reaction to Gutenberg. And I think it kind of depends on sort of like case to case client by client. So like some people are like, oh, the clients are freaking out. And some people are like the clients are like, this is amazing. And like, why wasn't this here like ages ago? So I can't really, yeah, broad strokes. I don't know. I think most plugins will, or pretty much every plugin that wants to remain in the market is going to make sure they are Gutenberg compatible. So as long as it's sort of like the plugin is regularly updated that you're using, their developer is going to update to make sure it's Gutenberg compatible, otherwise people will stop using it. You should be okay because I didn't show this as a demo. The default for if a post is already created is the classic block, which essentially works kind of like the old WYSIWYG editor. So 
All your previous posts will be converted into classic blog content. Everything will stay the same and hopefully work as long as like nothing crazy is happening with like plugins and so forth. It's going to depend case by case, but for like most themes, most most sites, you should be okay. You can go back. You don't have to like convert everything to blocks uh, that's already been there. I'll just sort of like live in sort of like a little WYSIWYG sort of editor block instead for the moment. Cool, that's very helpful. Uh, is there a for a couple of folks? So if you're running a couple, are you using WordPress with that? This API and I'll bring the version to track well with this API? I'm not sure of the sort of how the API and Gutenberg are going to work together. Um, Think there should be ways to pull it in. I'm not. I'm not certain. But in terms of like the sort of like the re a reusable post uh, option, I'm sure it's possible to extend it in a way that you can use it more easily with the API. Oh, or like a set, like setting. So this is, um, it's basically, if you don't want Gutenberg, you have to install the classical, classic editor plugin. It's not going to be like a setting in the back end of WordPress. So currently what we, what you have in the is going to be like, there's going to be a response that has been added uh, to your editor or maybe something that is going to VK quality or we need to re the certain things back to it? Uh, I'm not sure I understand. Uh, I'm not sure. Sorry. We have time for one more question. Is this front end editing? Not sort of, not really. Uh, like I mean, there is a separation between the front and back end. It's not like uh, Divi or something where I think you can go, to, or like certain other e editors where you can go to the front end turn it on and click things and we'll update there. This is still sort of like separation between front and back. When you're in the dashboard, you're in the dashboard. When you're in the front, you're on the front. So 